James Lynch here for Flow Combat. I'm joined with uh, UFC lightweight Cajun Johnson. And uh, today, rather than doing a typical interview, we're going to play some video games. Yeah. And uh, Cajun, we were talking, we, we had to figure out which game we were going to play. But uh, yeah. you picked Road Rash, which yes. is a very underrated game, I must say, on the Sega Genesis. So yeah. we're, we're going to play a little bit of that. This okay. was considered high tech, by the way, back yeah. in the day. So uh, uh, I think uh, the A button there is your, yeah. uh, is your one there. And I believe I am on the oh, top Oh, yeah, screen. you're on top. No, I'm on top. Okay. I think. Hold on one sec. Yeah, yes. you, are, you are on top. Yes. Perfect. All right, man. So, yeah, you know, big fight. We, we talked about it, obviously, uh, a few weeks ago when we did our interview there. But uh, Makashev, I kind of get the sense, uh, no, and, and, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit, that, uh, you know, the UFC's kind of trying to get you to, to lose one of these ones. I mean, they give you really tough fights. Yeah. You look at some of the last ones, uh, you know, even in Vancouver a couple of years ago, you fought Martins. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on just, you know, when, when you got the matchup, I'm sure you're just like, you know what, let's let's do this. Uh, let's, you know, I'll prove them wrong again. Yeah, well, they, they don't really... Like the, they're not masters of martial arts, right? So they're trying to give me matchups that are difficult for me to win and against guys that have the least amount of name value possible so that I don't get as much shine as I deserve. Um, just because I think they're kind of scared of the things that I represent and the things that I say in public. Um, but they are giving me these guys that are perfect for my style. Mm-hmm. And so it's really just serving me more. Right. You keep giving them to me, I will keep beating them, and I'll keep looking good, and I'll keep saying whatever I want because I like to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like I'm going to go out there and tell some crazy wild lies or something. I'm going to tell the truth. Um, and if you don't like that, well, uh, too bad because that's reality and that's the world we live in. Eventually, you got to be held accountable for your actions, and if you're not acting in the right way, people are going to know about it. I hear you on that, and uh, right now Cajun's currently uh, in, I believe it's 13th place, I'm in 8th, uh, it's, it's so tough to come in first in this game, so you got to really, uh, yeah, you know, be on the ball there, uh, but, terrible. Uh, but, but I forget but, how to hit people. I, I think you press the, uh, you, you hold A and then you press B there, that that should get you okay. the, uh, the, the hit button, then you can grab All some right. weapons, Yeah, this is a, such a good game back in the day, graphics don't really oh, hold up, but uh, I just got annihilated by this car every um, time. Have you taken a look at the odds for this fight? Because I believe Makashev is the is the biggest favorite on the card. Yeah, probably. This always happens to me. I'm always the biggest underdog. Um, I haven't looked at the odds, mm-hmm. uh, but I have looked at like the topology rating, and it's it, it's like like ninety percent of people think uh, think he's gonna win by knockout or submission or something. And yeah, it, people always think I'm gonna lose. No matter who I'm fighting, people think I'm gonna lose. And you would think they would learn after this many wins in a row, but they don't. So it's all good. Fine by me. Uh, I might actually place a little wager on myself if I am the biggest underdog. That's awesome. More money for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I'll just keep doing it over and over again because it seems to continue. And we talked a lot about uh, you know the UFC and, and you know you being outspoken on the union and all that stuff and being part of Project Spearhead as I come in fifth place here. Let's see if you can get... Uh, as long as I'm not last. 10th uh, place. I think 14th last place, so we'll, we'll okay. see if uh, see what happens here. But no, um, you know, you're very outspoken, and I think for a lot of fighters, you're, you're doing a service. It's too bad we don't see more fighters speak out about it. But um, do you feel like a loss here, the UFC would just cut you? Because it seems like, you know, uh, it, th- that's sort of been the chatter, uh, you know, amongst the media. What, what's your thoughts on all that? I know losing doesn't enter your mind, but... Uh, no, losing, of course, enters my mind. Yeah. Anybody <laughs> that losing doesn't enter their mind, you're delusional. Yeah. Like, I don't know where you came from, but people lose in this sport all the time. Mm. And I got the last place. You did. I'm Perfect. not good at video games. But, <laughs> like, I, I got to be at peace with it, really, because I can't, I can't perform at my best if I'm not being honest with myself and in order to be honest with myself that translates into being honest with everybody because I have to do these interviews Mm -hmm. so um, so I can't do it any other way Mm -hmm. like I did it for a long time and it kind of ate a piece of my soul not uh, not saying what I wanted to say when I wanted to say it Um, and it would be a huge regret I would regret more ascending to the top winning the belt and leaving the champion without saying anything then uh, if for I, I if I got cut like today for for nothing you right. know for I win today or I lose today and I get cut because of what I'm saying uh, I would re- regret not not talking and winning a belt more 
One of the things that we saw over the last couple of weeks is a new main event for uh, one of the fight cards that's coming up here in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Of course, uh, Ally Quinta, uh, your former nemesis, now uh, you know colleague at uh, Project Spearhead, yeah. it was supposed to fight Justin Gaethje, and uh, now James Vick is fighting him, and Al is seemingly healthy. Have you talked to Al at all since that happened? Because uh, no. it seems like there was a lot of, yeah, there was a lot of stuff. Well, just your thoughts on it then. I don't know what's going on with Al. He doesn't doesn't talk in our group anymore. Um, okay. But uh, but. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what the... the he's Al's kind of all over the place. Right. He's real hard to predict. Mm-hmm. Um, you never know what the guy's going to do, which is interesting. I, I, I'm very interested to buy, buy Al. I think he's an amazing specimen. I want to study him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, I really... I don't know why he wouldn't accept that fight. If he is, in fact, healthy and ready to compete, like, why don't you want to do it? Um... Well, some people speculated it was a pay issue because of the fact that uh, the tickets went on sale the next day, and, the, and that's when he was announced that he was going to be out of the fight. And it seems like he's healthy. So some people say that maybe the UFC lowballed him as far as the offer goes. Probably the UFC almost definitely lowballed him. He probably got lowballed for that um, for the fight that he came into, uh, as well as last fight uh, against the champ. Mm-hmm. Probably got lowballed for that too. Um, I don't think he has a manager as well so sometimes you'll get taken advantage of more if you don't have a manager mm-hmm. um, so, but really like they're going to try to take advantage of you regardless if you have, whether you have a manager or not uh, until you gain that leverage where you can really do whatever you want to do and people are going to go people are going to tune in and watch like say a Floyd uh, uh, a Conor McGregor like until you gain that type of leverage they can do whatever they want because there's yeah. no competition. They know that you want to be fighting in the UFC because there's nowhere else that you can fight and be the best in the world. There is no other place. So you're really handcuffed in this business to do whatever they want to do. And if you say no or you say anything about it, then you there is going to be negative treatment. There's going to be bad press. They're going to be talking negatively about you in the media. Um, and it's really a shame. But if we actually got off our asses and signed some fucking membership cards, then maybe we'd have a voice at the table. And I'm still waiting for these fighters to, like, have a fire lit under them. Like, every, every time I hear something happen, like, for instance, the $1.5 billion TV deal that just went down that we have 0% of, yeah. um, just that alone, you would think, would be enough so that people would be like, okay, obviously there's something needs to change. Like, okay, let's sign cards. But no. Or even say something in the media. Dude, it's crickets, man. Mm-hmm. It's just crickets. I don't understand it. I don't know if I'll ever understand it. Um, I'm not going to stop trying. Uh, unfortunately, we only have till, uh, I think it is December or January. I forget exactly when we started this. Nice place, uh, I didn't way. lose. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We're getting better. Um, I got yes. fourth, you got ninth. So Killer. We're, we're improving in this game. Yeah, so we only have till another couple months until until we have to restart the process if we don't get the 51%. Okay. But if that happens, we'll just restart, mm-hmm. right? Everybody that's signed on will obviously sign on again. Another thing that we're fighting is the fact that in organizing, you have to be, a, in order to be a part of the union... At least, really, the only spot that ma- the the one that matters right now is the UFC because Bellator is, is I don't have enough contacts in there. It's is proving too difficult to organize both at this time. Um, so we're just focusing on the UFC right now. Uh, but in doing that, everybody has to be signed by the UFC. Mm-hmm. So some of these guys that we're signing are near the bottom of the roster, and then they lose in their cut, and then that's another spot that we have to fill. I you see. know, so. It's it's really difficult, man. It's really difficult. But luckily, that's not the only that's not the only prong of the attack. It's a three prong attack right now, so um, or a three prong defense really, because nobody is, we're not attacking anybody. We've been attacked for years and oppressed for years. Oh, that sign kills me. Yeah. Just kill oh me no, there. that was you. That was me. Ha! <laughs> I thought it was you for a second. Okay. Um, so there's also the Alley Act, and there's also the antitrust lawsuit. Um, the three of these things together eventually are going to create some sort of equal playing field or level playing field in the world of mixed martial arts. Um, whether the company likes it or not, it's going to happen, and it is happening. Um, and the Ali Act is gaining a lot of traction. 
as well as his antitrust lawsuit. There was a little hiccup in it, but it got fixed, um, thank God. And who, who are you working with primarily in this? Um, I'm working with everybody that wants to, that is willing to organize. Um, so for Project Spearhead, I'm mainly working with Lucas Middlebrook and Leslie Smith. Uh, Al is still around and I think he's kind of boots on the ground behind the scenes. He's still helping um, to get membership cards signed. Um, but he's not really active in the group. Like I tried to talk to him the other day and I, I got nothing back. I, nobody's been talking except for me and me and Lucas in this group for a while. Um, but I'm still, I'm still working in, in some manner with the MMAFA. Mm -hmm. And not in that, like, uh, I'm actually in their group because they kicked me out for the Project Spearhead thing or asked me to leave for the Project Spearhead thing. Mm -hmm. um, but we still talk often. I'm still in contact with Rob Macy and Carlos Newton quite often. And I will work with them on different endeavors. When they need me, I'm, I'm in, you know, and, uh, and vice versa. So, so it's, it's good, man. Everybody that's willing to... To, to work for the cause. Ah, oh, I stole somebody's bat. I know, and you're going to come it. get me, so i got to get yes. away from you. <laughs> um, no, that, that's all great to hear. Um, you've got a lot going on outside the cage. You just dropped your new track. We talked about this in yeah. the interview. Finally dropped. What's the feedback been for that? Uh, it's been mixed reviews. Obviously, Twitter hates it, but Twitter hates everything. Yeah. Um, Twitter is just comprised of all the haters of society, I'm pretty sure, at this point. Yeah. So negative or positive, uh, you're always going to get hated on on Twitter. Um so that's what it, what it is, no big deal. Holy crap, you beat me. Yes! Fourth place. Getting better. Every time I get better. See, I start I sucking and then I get better and better, just like my MMA career. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, on YouTube, actually, it's been more, more likes than dislikes. Okay, that's good. Um, and Instagram has been amazing. Like they, every, But it's obviously, it's my actual platform, people that are following me directly. So it's uh, most of the people that are supporting me are going to support what I do, right? Right. Um, but in the music industry, actually, it's, it's, it's made a little bit of noise. Like, Good. it's been shown to a couple, like, big-time producers and, uh, and publishers, and people like it. Um, people like it a lot. It's, uh, I, I don't, I can't talk about exactly which movie, but uh, a, some, one of the, a production is actually looking at picking it up uh, for their soundtrack. That's so great. that's cool. That's very cool. Uh, yeah. We're gonna do we're gonna do one last race here, and we'll uh, wrap things up. But right. uh, you All know, right. we do you do have a fight on Saturday. Um, you know, you talked about the advantages. Uh, you know, before in, in the fight for yourself and everything like that. Just training at TriStar, having that full camp, having those different bodies, is is the approach a little bit different? Because I know last time you did spend some time at TriStar, but this seemed like a really like a full fledged camp that you got to spend there. Like, how, how much does that help heading into this fight? Well, really, I spent the exact same amount of time there. Oh, you did? Okay, maybe different by a day. Okay, um, but this time was a lot better. I just in that um, for one I had Jamie there with me the yeah. whole time so that's like my number one drilling partner so it's awesome to have somebody there that's a, a good drilling partner that you can like if we want to just go and drill we can just go and drill like I don't yeah. need to wait for classes and stuff like that um, and the sparring was really good um, I had great partners to work with for sparring like I did a lot of work with Nazrat I did a lot of work with Ollie who were both really good looks for this guy. They're not identical to him, but nobody's identical, right? They were both really good looks, uh, great southpaws, one good, really good southpaw striker, and another really good southpaw striker. Actually, Ollie's gotten to be quite a good striker, um, but also that has a phenomenal base in judo and wrestling. Uh, so it's, it's really perfect, man. This camp has been perfect. Like, I had a little bit of worries going in because I had a nagging injury Mm -hmm. um, even when I signed the fight, I got it like a couple of weeks before I signed and I was pretty sure that I would be able to do the whole camp um, and, and, and work around it and it just worked out perfectly man, the way I structured the camp was perfect, I did a lot of like my conditioning work early on, like started heavy conditioning really really quickly, uh, lots of legs and lung stuff, lots of gas tank stuff. Um, and then was able to work into more of the the live goes um, like five five weeks out. I started doing a lot more live stuff, um, which just worked amazingly. And now I'm I'm way healthier than I was for Martins, and I'm in better shape than I was for Stevie Ray. So it's really like the best of both worlds. 
Um, it's not always that we can get into a fight week uh, healthy, injury wise and and uh, physically wise, like sick wise, um, and as well be in phenomenal shape right. at the same time. Because sometimes you have to sacrifice training in order to uh, allow an injury to heal or allow a sickness to decrease. Like um, it can be, it can be difficult, right? But I've been blessed in this camp and. I'm really, really excited. Beat you again. What? Did I have not been blessed at all? <laughs> Eighth place. This is this is not good. Um, Cajun man, this was awesome. awesome. Really, really good Thank talking you. in person. Yeah, Glad to do too. some uh, some stuff there. Uh, play some games, I should say. Uh, Cajun fight Saturday against Islam Makashev. You can watch that uh, on, uh, I guess, in Canada on TSN and uh, you know elsewhere on uh, Fox and everything like that. I want to thank Cajun. If you got anything to plug, I know you got some sponsors. And yeah, stuff. yeah, let's, for uh, sure. Let's plug away, man. Okay, so I got a shout out to Receptra. You can go right into the camera there. Look at that. Receptra. Oh, you can't see it. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Shout out to Receptra. Beautiful CBD company. Shout out to Primal Herb. Shout out to Chomp Vegan Eatery. These guys are so amazing for meal prep. They really got my back. I made tasty vegan food delivered to your door twice a week. It's phenomenal. Um, and then Buds and Herbs, uh, my cannabis sponsor. Can't forget Buds, Buds and Herbs. But Buds and Leaves. Sorry. Buds and Leaves. <laughs> from my man Jeeves. Shout out to him. And yeah, quality uh, with always, always with the fresh gear, you know, keeping me looking good. And that's it. Unfortunately, TriStar Gym, obviously. Yeah. Can't forget TriStar Gym, TriStar Vancouver, TriStar Montreal. One love, all family, all day.